All right, so my number five is the man that a lot of older generation have as the number four, Joe Lewis Barrow, the Brown Bomber. Moved to Detroit thanks to the KKK in 1926 at 12 years old. Great Depression hit. This man had two choices, gang life or boxing. Thank God he chose boxing. Began his amateur career at 17 years old when the Detroit area Golden Gloves uh, and finished his amateur career at 50 and four with 43 knockouts. And then as a pro, AJ went 66 and three, absolutely fighting through a period of boxing where white America was very sour on black boxers. They did not like Jack Johnson. They didn't like his style. They didn't like anything about him and were wary of having another black champion. So Joe Lewis had to be better cleaner smarter than his white contemporaries For and sure. fight through a whole lot of crap to even get a title shot you're right he got those title shots and along the way of defeating fighting and defeating max Schmeling in the rematch becoming a the first black national hero for america did you know the man also by the way helped desegregate the pga i did not know that but that is very interesting this man picked up boxing. He found out about it uh, the week before the first Max Schmeling fight and fell in love with it and stayed in love with it and got a sponsor exemption as a celebrity in 1952 when the PGA was still, quote unquote, Caucasians only. Huh. And he was the first. He led to the opening of the doors. He helped start the first tee, which is for underprivileged yep. used to be able to play golf. Love the this first man, tee. What I mean, look, there's a reason there's a big fist in the middle of the D. You're right. And You're this right. man absolutely belongs. If he's not on the first one for the newer generation, he belongs on the second one for our generation. So when we did these, okay, uh, I had Joe Lewis too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh iconic, definitely a guy that has to be somewhere immortalized in this pantheon of Detroit athletes. Um like you said, right? Became heavyweight champion, I believe, in 1937 when he beat the Cinderella man, uh, Jim Braddock. Yep. Right? And knocked then him held out. On, man, and never then, been knocked out. No. And then held on to that title for 11 years and eight months. He had mm-hmm. 25 contenders challenge him for the heavyweight championship. And he, in 25 title contentions, he defended it and almost won by knockout in every single one. He knocked out his opponent in almost all 25 of those contending bouts. He is he is on my list, too. Now, to be fair, when I ordered them, I just started writing names down. Mm-hmm. So Joe Lewis is actually second on my list. It wasn't intentional to leave him in, like, six. But uh, I do definitely have him at in, in my list at six. Can you imagine? This man fought 13 times in 1935. There's only 12 months. <laughs> I, this man fought more than once a month for the year of 1935 to be named AP Athlete of the Year. 